Hello everyone, welcome to the Gravity Channel. Today we are beginning our journey towards studying 12th standard physics. This is mainly going to consist of electromagnetism, consisting of electrodynamics and magnetodynamics. Earlier these were discovered and studied as separate phenomena, but later on very wise minds combined them. That is, these two phenomena are different perspectives of the same single phenomenon, and so you will be studying throughout your course. First we will study electrodynamics, then magnetodynamics and then we will realize how linked they are. Okay, I will try to keep a natural progression of topics which you will realize during this video. Still I suggest you keep handy NCRT or any other related textbooks with you. If you do not have physical textbooks, you may download ones from the links given in the description box. Okay, So today we are starting. Electrostatics, these are first two chapters of your course. Electrostatics come from the root words electron, originally pronounced as electron and static meaning stationary. So we are going to see effects of stationary charges. Here electron represents charges. So the origin of electrostatic phenomenon or studies dates back to ancient Greece. The women in ancient Greece complained that their amber clad jewelries when rubbed with the silk cloths produced small shocks. So amber in Greece is called electron. Amber is this little jewel stone. In Greece it is called electron. Okay. So this phenomenon of getting small shocks was so rampant, so widespread that scientists began an organized study of this phenomenon. They started taking ambers and rub it with different silk cloths, wool, fur. They also rub different pairs of materials like hair with paper, glass with polystyrene, wool with wood and rabbit fur with rubber. These different pairs of objects after being rubbed attracted each other and repelled themselves. Like paper when rubbed with hair and glass when rubbed with polystyrene, the hair and glass rubbed repelled and paper and polystyrene repelled each other. Okay? So, Logically, they classified these materials into two columns and arbitrarily they named column 1 as positive and column 2 as negative. The logic behind this being opposites attracting. So prior to rubbing, they did not attract or repel and hence they were called neutral. So objects were classified as positive, negative and neutral. This naming was arbitrary, they could have as well named as the first column to be negative and the second column to be positive and if that was the case today electron would have been called positive and proton would have been called a negative charge but the naming totally being arbitrary that is it was their, their choice today we have a positive proton and a negative electron so positive and negative were totally arbitrarily named they could have named this as north and south also okay so these pair of charges when rubbed with each other, they start attracting and also repelling in some other cases. So let's see one such phenomenon, let's see one such experiment ourselves. So here is our pair of triboelectricity, this polythene and hair of our volunteer. Hello ma'am. Hello. We will try to do some friction. You can already see the attraction. Can you see? Okay. Let's see more. This is a stream of water. The stream of water is bent now. Okay, now the effect will be gone. Now there is no effect. Okay. So, in this little experiment, we saw that polythene when rubbed with human hair was attracting human hair and also it was attracting a stream of water. So, what you may pause for a moment and think what does friction does to objects that they start attracting each other? Like friction produces some new magical force. The answer to this is friction makes transfer of matter. 
like this pen when made to rub with hand it transfers matter it transfers some of its ink to my hand so this is a big visible example even in small cases when two things rub they transfer particles they transfer matter so now we clearly know that this matter is nothing but electrons so the object that gains electrons becomes negatively charged and the object that loses electron becomes positively charged so friction does a transfer of charges and produces some kind of electricity hence this phenomenon is also called frictional electricity or triboelectricity tribos is friction in degrees okay so triboelectricity frictional electricity and electrostatics are the same names are different names for the same thing okay so now we are talking about charge and everybody here has a rough idea of what charge is like the mobile phones are being charged and charge is something that produces shocks but let's exactly see what you will call a charge so by definition charge is an intrinsic physical property of matter which enables it to experience a force when kept in an electromagnetic field yeah big fancy definition you will have to remember this okay so a charge let's break down the definition it will be simpler to memorize so a charge is an intrinsic property intrinsic means something internal that cannot be taken away from it like say this pen mass is maybe 20 g so 20 g is an intrinsic property of this pen meaning you cannot take away 20 g and the pen away they will be always together you can break the pen but still the mass of those small pieces will be with the matter itself similarly charge is an intrinsic property of matter you cannot take away electron charge from it you cannot break down an electron and take its charge away charge is an intrinsic property so property means it's a characteristic of matter it is not matter it is a characteristic of matter electron is not charge proton is not charge electron is a charged particle proton is a charged particle means electron is something that has a property called charge okay so charge is an intrinsic property of matter this matter states that only matter can have this property charge meaning what what other things can be the other things apart from matter can be maybe vacuum or radiation so vacuum does not have any charge similarly radiation does not have any charge only matter has charge charge is an intrinsic property of matter which enables it to experience a force so charge is such property because of which it experiences force like mass is such a property because of which this pen experiences gravitational force charge is such a property because of which it experiences a force what force electromagnetic force electromagnetic force like gravitational force is one of the fundamental four fundamental forces that we had studied earlier uh, so unlike gravity electromagnetic force is also repulsive and it is way stronger than gravitational force we will study the details so to summarize what is charge charge is an intrinsic property of matter by the virtue of which it experiences electromagnetic force the symbol for charge is q the basic formula fundamental formula of charge is q equals to it i for current and t for time so in si units charge is not considered fundamental in si ampere and second are fundamental units of current and time so the fundamental unit of charge is ampere second also called as coulomb so one coulomb is one ampere second that will be our si unit which will be using other popular units are elementary charge or e so e is charge of a proton or negative charge of an electron the value is 1.6 in newton raised to minus 19 coulomb we will be using this e a lot so you may as well memorize this other popular units are one faraday one faraday is the total charge of one mole of protons that is 6.023 into 10 to 23 protons avogadro number of protons has one faraday charge so it comes out to be 96485.33 coulombs of charge other popular unit of charge is one ampere hour which you may be familiar with uh, these days batteries deal with ampere hours only so one ampere hour is 3600 coulomb of charges so when you say your mobile battery is 4000 mAh capacity you mean it can store 4000 mAh milliampere hours so 4 ampere hours 4 ampere hours means 4 into 3600 coulomb of charges okay 
So uh, we are ending our introductory lecture here today. In the next lecture, we will continue more about charge. We will see how charges behave with each other and what effect does charge create upon itself also. We will see electromagnetism in the next videos in detail. I will give you two tasks for the today's video. You may find out other units of charge like ESU, electrostatic unit is another popular unit of charge. Also, uh, try to figure out that in our experiment today, we saw that polythene which got charged attracted a stream of water. So attracting hair is justified, both got charged. But stream of water was not rubbed with anything, it was neutral. So why a neutral object got attracted to a charged object? Try to figure out that. The best answers to these two questions will be shown in our next video. Thank you. See you again.